Good morning, church. My name is Mick Denlinger, and I've been attending church most of my life, and I've been attending FBCNL for the last 14 years. Though I admit, up until the past six years, it was because my wife wanted me to be here instead of myself wanting to be here. I've always believed in God, but always lived my life for me and not for him. Around seven years ago, my wife and I discussed joining a small group, and through that small group, I started to notice a change in my life. We had made friends that were active in the church and actively seeking God, which was new to me. My whole life I had been around church, but I had never built a relationship with the people in those churches. As time went on, Chelsea and I would partake in serving in various ways around the church, and I was even feeling some conviction for the way I lived my life. But I admit I was just following her lead on how we served and where. I truly believed that I was doing enough for God and that he would save me even though I hadn't committed my life to him. Then, in December of 21, God tested my faith to the fullest. My mom got sick, and it turned pretty serious pretty quick. I spent a lot of time praying and pleading with God to make her better, and praying that he would heal her and show her his grace. My mom passed away on January 3rd, and I was devastated. And I was so angry that God had taken her from me when I wasn't ready for her to go. I couldn't understand why. Even though I had prayed so hard for her to get better, he had taken her, and it crushed me. But in that season of sorrow, I felt a closeness with God that I had never experienced before. God revealed a lot of self-doubts that I had about my relationship with Jesus and some areas of unforgiveness that I had been holding on to for years because I was too stubborn to let them go. In that time, he showed me that he is sovereign and that his mercy was worth more than needing to figure out all of my doubts. Philippians 2.8 tells us that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. I knew I could no longer hold on to unforgiveness and that I needed to repent and put my faith in Jesus. When life crumbled around me, God's presence became my strength. My eyes were open to his goodness and my, de- my desires were changed. And I now fully know and trust him in a way that has changed my life. I know that his will for my life is far better than my own. And even though I don't have all the answers, I can be at peace knowing that I will spend eternity with him. Even though public speaking is my biggest fear, I'm proud to be standing here today in front of you all to proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Well, Mick, this day's been a long time coming, bro. And uh, man, I tell you, um, this guy right here, um, two years ago, I, you and I have talked about this quite a bit lately, but uh, Mick came into my office and said, hey, I need to talk, let's talk about baptism, let's talk about what God's doing, and and uh, so, man, you don't know how many people have been praying for you. And, uh, and I will tell you, I said, our staff's been praying for you for like two years because every Sunday for two years, Chad Raymer puts you on his card to say, would God save Mick Denlinger? And, um, and we had a conversation last summer, and you're going, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know it needs to happen, but uh, just not there yet. And, uh, and last Sunday, he comes to me, he said, you're baptizing my son next Sunday. I said, yes, sir. He said, you got room for one more? I said, what are you talking about? And, uh, and praise God. Thank God for what he's done. And, and man, just hearing your story of, honestly, you, even where you were even last summer and just kind of holding on to some things, and, and, uh, but yet how God has used those very things, what you told me and what you said in your testimony, how God has used those very things to actually bring you to himself. And uh, what an awesome thing. And so, so, Mick, have you received Jesus as your Savior, the one who died in your place for your sin? Have you received Jesus as your king, the one who leads you for the rest of your life into eternity? Yes. And have you received Jesus as your treasure, the one who is worth more than anything in this world? Yes, sir. And so, Mick, it's based upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, your king, and your treasure that I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 